We are back with episode six, and I'm going to title this one The No Show. And there's just going to be some behavior things that started um, immersing a pattern that I saw. I also have to say that you may or may not have noticed English is my second language. I speak it pretty well, but sometimes I say things that are just a little weird and off. So, disclaimer. If you think, what is wrong? Why is she speaking like that? It's English as my second language. But hopefully you can understand me pretty well for the most part in what I'm saying. So here is the no-show. So we had a kind of like a good pattern going on because when he started working his new job, right when I had had the baby the first baby he was working second shift so he wouldn't come home till 11 and we were young and I had like tons of friends so I kind of liked it because people would come over and hang like I had game night and it was just really fun but as soon as he switched to first shift I started recognizing that he hated having people over. I mean, anyone. He just did not want anyone to really come over. So one time when I was pregnant with the first baby, um, we hosted hospitality because there's a lot of pressure from the congregation to take care of the speaker. And, you know, in our book study group, we still had the book study at the time. You, you know, we're kind of like having to sign up and it's such a small group. So you feel the pressure and I like doing it. I liked having people over and everybody brought something. I cooked and we had people over and I started really feeling his emotions, his anger, if he was boiling, I started to really get to know those patterns. So we hosted hospitality and I could tell that he was not happy and he really wanted everyone to go. And he he started getting like so kind of uncomfortable that everyone was in tune with it and they did leave. It was just so awkward. I can't even really explain it. You have to be in that situation. You know how you feel like you're unwanted or somebody wants you to leave. And so they all left and I thought, oh, this is like so embarrassing. I mean, they did eat, but like after it was the the meal was eaten, he just really made it like kind of obvious, like it's time for everyone to go. But people excuse bad behavior. I, I feel like in the religion, especially with guys, they just don't even really judge a guy for doing that. So I started noticing like, hmm, this is kind of weird. Um, and as soon as he started moving to first shift, like regular shift, and he was home, no more game nights, not really people over anymore. He just really hated that. And part of me is like, well, he just doesn't really like social situations. And, he, you know, when people come over, whatever, I'll just make it work otherwise. But you also have the pressure as a Jehovah's Witness from the congregation to show hospitality. So I'm sitting at the meeting being fed like, you have to show hospitality to people and have them over. But at home, I feel like, okay, this guy doesn't really want anyone over. So it's like conflicting. But as as a Christian drilled in the Jehovah's Witness congregation, you're constantly having to try to improve yourself and do better. And so I will talk to him and say, well, how about we try to have someone over because... You know, we're really supposed to do that and have like, quote unquote, good association and stuff. So I started with people he really liked. They were a couple. Um, they had had their baby. And at that point, we had had our baby. And I'm like, how about we have them over? We'll make a simple meal. The kids can play. Well, they were like really little. They can crawl. And I said, it'll be fun. And he liked those people. I, I can't even explain, especially when you are in an abusive relationship, how you absorb the energy of the other person. He was not happy with this. So he, we had them over and I don't know if they felt what I was feeling, 
he was getting irritated and there's all these like body language things that I knew would happen when he was irritated and he was irritated for no reason except that we had people in our house and he didn't want them to be there um and I started getting so much anxiety because I thought I really was worried he was gonna kick them out for no reason at all for just you know it was just so awkward and I thought, oh my goodness, like, what is with this guy? These are our friends and you don't want them over. And I, I really had this like internal stress. And, and part of me now thinks like, was he just doing that to mess with me? Like have me feel like he's about to pop? Because I knew all the signs about when he was about to pop. And I'm like, is he just doing that with me? Because basically he didn't want to eat with people. He never ate with us. And he really just wanted to retrieve to like his bedroom and play video games and stuff so he couldn't do that when company was there so he just hated all of that and I'm like oh my gosh this is weird but at the same time I'm like I can't let him r run us over like that because it's also my place and for the kids it's not healthy to grow up never having people over and when they grow older I want them to have you know their friends can come and go and stuff like this is so weird so um, a while had gone by and I have like one of my sweet, sweet friends. She's out. I'm so happy. I love her so much. She's happy and out of the Jehovah's Witnesses. But she's like, how about we have a party together? Um, and because we had moved to like our first house at this point, um, we had the space and I'm like, yes, let's do it. Let's have like all our friends and we'll, we'll have a theme. And I thought, okay, I'm going to invite like my, like Troy, I'll invite Troy's really good friends, like people that he really likes, like from his old town, we'll invite them and we'll have a blast. So her and I started like getting everything ready for the party the babies like I think one they're both like walking and crawling at this point so two kids at this point I remember because I took pictures at this party um and Troy's like well I'm leaving <laughs> and I'm like because we're still in preparing mode I'm thinking okay he's just gonna like get out of here and you know come back when the party's there because it's like our family party kind of and I'm like, oh, where are you going? And he's like, the movies. And I'm like, okay, thinking that's weird, but okay. And so he left and people started to come in and, you know, a bunch of people. I mean, we had a pretty good sized party. Actually, even family members of his. Actually, even like some of his best friends. Troy, <laughs> Troy didn't come back from the movies. And I'm just like this is so awkward and embarrassing this is so embarrassing plus this is like before find mine all that I really didn't know where he was <laughs> you know he just disappeared basically all day and one of my childhood friends he was a, an elder and he is really nice he I he's a good guy he was like genuinely worried about me he was standing on the doorstep when they were all leaving and he's like are you okay? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm fine. He probably just has social anxiety. And he just looked at me like, hmm, it's weird. And I'm thinking, yeah, it is weird. But you know, I mean, part of me is always making excuses. The other part is like, what the heck? I mean, who does this? So his actually like best friends, they hung around because they felt like, okay, maybe he doesn't want to see like, 20 30 people but he'll want to see us you know because we were friends from like way back and he, I, I texted him and I'm like um your buddies are like hanging out and waiting for you they want to see you they want to hang with you you haven't seen each other in a while and he texted me back I will not come home till everyone has left awkward like what do you even do I can't tell these people that and so I'm trying to come up with he put me in such a pickle too I'm like you guys I don't think he's gonna be back and they're like where is he and I'm like I don't know <laughs> I mean it was probably 12 
midnight by the time they left. And it was just so awkward that everybody has come to our house and he has disappeared. <laughs> like, who does that? And it's also very un Jehovah's Witness like to do that because you're supposed to hang out with your brothers and all. But whatever. So, previously to this, um, before we had bought our new house, um, my mom and grandpa decided to come live closer to us, which to me was just absolutely wonderful because I had quite a hike going over to their place and I would drive it, but it was with a newborn. It was quite a hike. And I was also helping them drive because my grandpa was getting up in age and that was really, really hard for him and for my mom because here you were promised your whole life. The Jehovah's Witnesses, they promised, like they wrote articles, you are not going to get old. Armageddon is coming. You don't, you don't even need a career. They have this in writing. You don't need to worry about like having a career or a job. Pioneer, which means like spend all your time volunteering for the Jehovah's Witnesses because you're not even going to approach your retirement age. Well, here my grandpa was in his 80s and it was about to be the time where he couldn't drive anymore. And that was really hard to like take our patriarch's keys away, so to speak. And he was a wonderful guy. He was, he was not sexist or anything like that. He was not male domineering. We we're so lucky that we had him. Like he really was cool and he was chill and he was loving, but it was still, we we're still raised. Like he's the head of the house and here we're like, you can't drive anymore. So the decision was made. They were going to move closer to us. And I was really happy. Well, Troy was really mad. And I'm like, well, I know. I'm sorry. I know we're newlyweds. And like we started over in this part of town, like newly. But I also have the second baby on the way at this point. So this is a big help. Plus, I can help them. Like it is my family. And it's like my godly obligation. Plus, I love them. They're awesome. So I was really happy. But I felt like like he put me in this like position to where he was mad about it. So the day had come where they were going to move. And here's like an elderly brother who's been serving the congregation all his life. And my mom and where they were moving from, they were in a different congregation and that congregation was supposed to help them pack up. And we were on the receiving end, getting people together, helping them unload. And I had the little baby with me in the carrier and it was the weekend. Troy didn't take the day off. He was so easily could like switch work and he was like, well, I'm working. And I'm like, come on, switch, switch with someone. It was no problem. He did it all the time for things and he didn't switch. And I was really embarrassed because here, like the son-in-law who's big, strong guy, didn't help move and it's so embarrassing again because he doesn't show up like any other person would be there you know but not only that he went to play basketball with his buddies that night and didn't like come over and check how the move was going or anything and I'm just like mortified like this is so embarrassing I don't even want to tell anybody about it because I'm just so embarrassed like other people are helping us and like a, fa- a son-in-law's family and he's not He's not coming to help. Plus, my mom helped us so much with things. And she helped us with the babies and stuff like just out of plain old gratitude, you know, come and help. No, he didn't show up. But it was just really embarrassing. I have to tell a little Jehovah's Witness tale side story. Um, On the end of the congregation that my grandpa and grandma were leaving, like packing up from, they had gotten a group together to help them pack up and load up the U-Haul. And my grandpa's in his 80s, you know, so strong men are needed. And he had had a guy that he started studying with, we'll call him Sam. And Sam started becoming a Jehovah's Witness through the Bible study with my grandpa. So my grandpa viewed him as a son. And Sam, like, you know, in the Jehovah's Witness congregation, you kind of work your way up to serve the congregation, but you get titles. And it, in reality, it's really like ranks. You get a like a title and a rank and ooh, you're like part of the elite now. If we're going to be real, that's really how it is. And he 
was a ministerial servant, newly appointed. So he felt like he had this obligation to the congregation. And sometimes I feel like if you're dealing with people who aren't kind, they want to test if you're loyal to like the congregation and they they title it are you loyal to jehovah or like you know all this other stuff so sam had committed and he was like a son to my grandpa like they had a very close relationship he said he was going to help them pack up and load up the morning of the move and i'm not near there i'm like on the i'm i'm on the other end trying to help them unload getting everything organized there with the baby so sam young man strong is trying to get everything organized helping grandpa move out of the house and load up and one of the really really rude elders in that congregation calls him in to conduct them the service meeting that morning which means like step up and do an assignment and sam was like i can't i promised this brother that i studied with who i'm close to that i would help move and they put the guilt trip on him and in the end, he felt like he had to step up for the congregation and put my grandpa and really his previous commitment on the back burner. And it like threw a loop into this whole thing because now he had to go and like conduct meeting for field service and all this. So it, it just made like everything a mess. And it was such a jerk thing to do of that elder in that congregation, because in reality, if you're really going to be like Jesus and you're going to be kind, how about you, the root elder, drum up everyone in the congregation and help this elderly brother move. But no, going preaching, aka recruiting new people, is so much more important than helping a longtime member of the congregation move. And on top of that, my grandpa had done so much for the Jehovah's Witnesses in his whole life. As a matter of fact, his mother was in the concentration camp because she was a Jehovah's Witness under Hitler. So guess what? He grew up without a mom because here they sacrificed for the congregation. And then when you're older and no one really cares about you anymore because you can't perform, they won't even come and help you and drum up the congregation to help this elderly brother. And that really sucks. It really sucked. It hurt my grandpa deeply. And really like... The, the the people in the congregation that are marked as lowly and no good because they don't have titles and they don't have all these hours, they showed up to help him. All these guys that were not treated with this elite status in the congregation, they all came and they showed up. And I want to thank all of them because they were the really good people. All the people who strive to have a title and a rank, that is not what like being a Christian is about. If you're a Christian, you should be like Jesus and loving and kind. So it was just like unbelievable. And all these little stories, um, you know, they added up. And we really started thinking like, man, our religion is like not being kind to us for all the things that we've done. But we will get to that. We're not there yet. It's like our process. <laughs> this, uh, this whole story, this whole saga contributes to a whole process and we will get to it, I promise. But this episode was more of like the no show. And so, yeah, so he had like moved in and not helped, gone play basketball. Um, but in the end, I was just like so happy and we had mom and grandpa close. For me, it was a lovely time. So we'll continue more in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Hold on tight. The ride continues.